Hello and today I'm talking about the Batman Gotham City strategy game. This is one of the uh, newish games that I own. It came out in 2013, it wasn't that long ago. Um, and I bought, when it came out, I bought it immediately. I bought it, it was within a few days of it coming out, sight unseen. I didn't really know much about it, never played it, didn't know. And it's largely because it really felt like it was going to be my sort of game. I mean, it's it's territory control, which I love. It's got the, the comic book theme, a really great comic book theme. Um, and it's got all these cool little um, miniatures, these little figures and everything. It just, it just it just really seemed like it was something that I was going to enjoy. And luckily I do enjoy it, <laughs> luckily. In this game, players take on the role of one of the villains of the Batman universe, attempting to seize control of Gotham, although in reality you're just trying to um, score points or levels, uh, as it's described in the game. Every player has one of these uh, shields, and on the back of it is the uh, criteria for levelling up your character, basically. Um, if you can reach, is uh, you can't probably can't see it from there, but there's various different things you have to do. So in the first level, you have to control three territories. The second level, you have to go to um, own a henchman, which are one of these little plastic figures. Uh, third level, you have to spend six money and so forth. So you're gathering resources or controlling the board in order to level up. And the first person to reach level ten wins, or at the end of the game, the person with the highest level wins, which tends to be more likely. I've only seen someone hit level ten, I think, a couple of times. It's quite hard to do. Available to us we have the Joker, because we can't have Batman game without the Joker, uh, Two-Face, the Penguin and Killer Croc. When the game first came out there was a little bit of criticism that um, Croc was out of place because uh, thematically what you're doing is um, extortion and, and kidnapping and all these sort of criminal activities uh, and you're he hiring henchmen and things and Killer Croc doesn't really fit into that um, and that was said at the time people said, you know, Killer Croc, why is Killer Croc here? In light of the Dark Knight Rises, um, Bane might have been a, a better choice because they needed a strong character. Basically, the Killer Croc is, is the tough guy. Um, they needed a combat, one of the characters to be very combat-based. And yeah, Bane might have make a bit, made a better um, choice in, in light of the film. But in the comic book, he's he's pretty boring. Um, I think that Clayface probably would, would have been a smarter choice um, because he's appeared in the games as well. So people, you know, a large audience is familiar with him. Um, but yeah, no, no, they needed, they needed that tough guy character, and person, I don't have a problem with Killer Croc, it doesn't, maybe thematically it's a bit off, but um, it, it, they needed that character, they couldn't have not have a character that can behave that way. Uh, as I've said, Killer Croc is the tough guy, the, the Joker is the sort of sneaky guy, he's able to mess with the other players, um, the Two-Face is good at manipulating the rules of the game, manipulating the board and, and the cards and things to his advantage. And the penguin is good at um, gathering resources, resources being information and money. Uh, and so they all play quite differently. You're all, you're all doing the same thing. Your level up criteria is the same for every character. Um, which seems odd. It might, it might have made, it, seems like, it feels like it would have made more sense if each character had individual requirements um, to, to score their points or score their levels. But you kind of, you, when you play it, you realise you kind of need to have, you need, need to all be doing the same stuff because you need to know who's doing well and how to mess with the other players. You need to be able to do that because the game is very much more about messing with the other players rather than you know, hammering home your, your, your advantage. The main way that each character plays differently is because they have their own power cards. So you have this, everyone has a little deck uh, of their own powers, um, which as you level up, you'll gain access to. So you just have like unlockable abilities. Um, so the penguin has the, uh, the iceberg lounge that allows him to take extra money um, the Joker uh, is unpredictable, so uh, other villains need to spend twice the amount of information to attack him. Um, Killer Croc gets a uh, plus two combat bonus if he uh, has no henchmen with him. Um, two Face gets uh, gets his coin because one of the things these each of each in the, each of these deck is a unique item that the player can use. Uh, Joker has a um, laughing gas canister. The Penguin has a robot penguin, which counts as an extra henchman. Uh, and Killer Croc can place this sort of bear trap, sort of spring trap thing, um, which will which will capture people or, or prevents people from entering uh, territories. And Two Face has his coin. Um, this is a little cardboard token. I'm working on replacing these with miniatures. The only one I've placed so far is this stupid little Two Face cardboard coin. I could place that with a nice um, metal replica because this is this little thing isn't very good. Um, so that's much nicer to to flip when you're playing as Two Face. But I'm going to working on replacing um, all of these with these little mini miniature figures and things um, just because it just makes it that much more visually interesting but it's nice that the four villains play differently because it adds a lot of replayability um, to, to you know you, you want to try out the other characters 
Uh, I tend to find that Killer Croc walks away with it at first. You've got to monitor Killer Croc because he's the most threatening. Uh, and one of the main resources you've got on the board is your threat, which are these little cardboard tokens. So you're placing threat, and whoever has the most threat or on the board on a, in a location controls the location. Minions also count as one threat. Henchmen count as one threat um, for that purpose. But Killer Croc can get his threat on the board much quicker. He's much more scary than everybody else is, obviously. Um, so he gets his threat on the board a lot quicker than everybody else can. Um, so he needs he always needs the, that player always needs monitoring at the beginning. He needs a little bit of controlling. Otherwise, they will jump ahead really quickly. In fact, they're the only player capable, I think, of scoring. Theoretically, the Joker can, but the, the, the Croc can level up on his first turn. Um, so he can score a point immediately without even having to really do anything uh, if the player's smart. Um, this board, as well as having the level up criteria on it, you'll see it's got actually got all of the rules on it back as well, um, and turn, including turn order and how combat works and how tough Batman is. It's got Batman's level counter, so you can keep track of how tough Batman is. Um, because Batman will appear, you see a Batman figure here, he will appear on the board uh, and sort of beat you up and start removing your threat and clearing territories and, and kind of you know, just, just policing the board really. Um, so he is he he is a nuisance. He's not that tough at first, but he can't be defeated. He, you know, when you when you beat him in a fight, he he just gets tougher. He just level he levels up, returns to the back cave and levels up and just gets tougher and tougher and tougher. Um, so the more you beat him, the harder he becomes to beat. You know, you can never defeat Batman. <laughs> that's just that's just the way it is. But yeah, you gain those powers as you level up. I think every other level, yeah, every 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 even numbered level, uh, you gain a new power. Uh, the reason you have these boards, what I want to say about these boards, is that you need to keep your money and information secret. And you do that because the first thing you do on your turn, in turn order, is that you level up. So you can't set, you can't gain a level on your turn. You have to set yourself up, and then on your next turn, you get the level if you've managed to keep whatever it is you needed to to, to get the level. You keep the territory or the resources. So you need to keep your resources secret because you don't you need people to not know when you're going to suddenly jump and level. Because you can do more than one level at once. So you can go, hey, look, I control what is it? I control five territories, but I also have 10 money so I'll go up there and I want to have four minions I'm keeping them hidden in here as well um, so you keep them hidden in your in your lair essentially um, so you can jump up more than one level at once without people realizing and if people realized you were going to do because people knew you were going to do that knew you had a big stack of money they would probably start picking on you and they'd start trying to send Batman after you and things like that so you do need to keep your information secret the only problem is that these boards are massive these these little screens um, and they're quite awkward and in the way and I've never played a game this way I haven't been constantly knocking it over all the time um, so yeah they're, they're a bit there's a, there's a slight a small gripe that these are a tad unwieldy they don't need to be this big I don't think um, if, well they do need to be this big just because they've got all the rules written on the back but yeah they, they're, they're just they're just a bit in the way to be honest so yeah on your turn first thing you do is see if you can um, advance a level and then that might give you more abilities then the next thing you do is you play a card. So every player will have a handful of these cards. You'll have five cards in your hand. I've got far too many here. You can have five cards in your hand at any one time. And when you play one, you replace it. Um, and, and these cards all have uh, various different functions they have. So we have extortion in downtown, exchange of information. They all have a, a sort of um, flavor text title, recruiting, that, that explains what it is you're doing. So you might be doing smuggling or, or whatever, you know, whatever criminal activity you're, you're partaking of. But when you play a card in your turn, there's there's two things that happen. So you have to, each card has a top and a bottom half. Now, when you play a card, you have to do the top half. The top half always happens. And that will be to give resources. So some locations of the board will give out resources. Locations with the yellow symbol give out information. And locations with the green symbol give out money. Whether you control the territory or not, that's going to happen. Now, the way you control a territory for that purpose is you have the most threat there. Threat are these little cardboard tokens. And every minion counts as one threat for this purpose as well. And whoever has the most in a location controls it. You can joint controls. So if you have, say, that you've got three penguin threat here and three joker threat, it means they both control Star Labs. So whenever, any time that Star Labs gives information, even on another player's turn, they will both get it. They will both get that resource. Uh, so when you play a card, you do the top half, which gives a resource, and then you can choose to do the bottom half. The bottom half in this one is extortion in downtown. Uh, take one dollar for each block in downtown where you have at least one threat. So if I was the Joker, as I am here, uh, the Joker has in fact threat in every block in downtown, so he'd get four money for that, which is quite good. And uh, so you kind of want to be doing things that you can. You want to really be doing something where you can do both. So you want to be able to get the resources and get the um, bottom power, but the bottom power might sometimes be so good that you don't mind giving other players resources. 
Um, but yeah, you're kind, of, you're kind of trying to find combos that work for you. But you don't have to do the bottom half. So you, while you have to do the top half, you don't have to do the bottom half. The bottom half, you can just ignore the text and instead take two of something. So take two information, two money, or place two threat on the board to try and get your threat out there. That's the easiest way to get threat on the board. The other way to get threat on the board is to win combat. If you win, if you have a fight with a with Batman or with another villain and you win, you get to place two threat on the board as well because you're considered more dangerous. Um, some of these cards, this one here, for example, the top half has the bat symbol on it. And this just says draw a card from the Batman deck. Now, some these usually these are really really good. The powers on the bottom of the Batman cards, but you don't always want to be playing them just because you don't want to be drawing from the Batman deck. Batman deck can be quite nasty. So we have Batman, move Batman to a block with the most total threat and minions. So Batman will immediately move. In this case, he'll move to... Hmm, looks like he's going to move... In fact, I think he's going to move to the Penguin's location. So he's going to move to the Penguin's location and immediately engage the Penguin in combat. Um, that's bad for the Penguin player. In addition, he's also going to, depending on his level, he's going to remove threat from that block anyway. So that could be bad for everyone. Uh, we have move Batman to a block in downtown, so whoever played the card gets to pick where he goes. So if it wasn't one of these guys, it's probably going to get into a fight there as well. Uh, all players lose two information. That's really bad. It could be really annoying. Someone could be guaranteeing on that to level up, and suddenly Batman's just stolen it off of them. Um, so the Batman cards, yeah, Batman just is coming onto the board in order to mess with everyone. Sometimes you can manipulate the ways, and you know, and, and you can aim him if you're lucky. Um, but yeah, yeah, you want you you only often you'll do that just because you're like oh, I've got nothing else to do and I really want to take advantage of that power, so I got to do it. Got to get Batman on the board. Um, Killer Croc is the only person who actually wants Batman on the board because at early levels, Batman is an easy fight for Killer Croc to just sort of beat him up and get some threat around. Um, he's he's pretty much the only person who can beat him. You need, everyone else needs a little army of minions with them to do it. Uh, once you've done your criminal plot, you discard your card, draw a new one, so that you have five in your hand. The um, it's very this is a very light strategy to this game. I mean, you, you're working on you only ever have five cards in your hand, so you can only ever plan that far ahead. But often they won't work very well together, and okay, so occasionally you'll be kind of be gathering cards so that you get a little run of maybe three cards uh, if you're lucky that work together in a row. So you're then trying to complete that and to get it going, or maybe there's a really really good power on a card that you want to activate, so you, you're trying to um, get yourself best positioned in order to do that. Some of them will have requirements like you must have uh, you must if you rule amusement mile um you roll a die for each minion you have at crime alley so if you want to get all your minions there just so you can um, you can take advantage of those powers rather say you'll only have have five cards in your hand so the strategy is fairly light and you're often just sort of playing turn by turn just to try and uh, optimize your position for fu for the future once you play the card uh, you may spend money spend five money to recruit a henchman um, there are some cards that allow you to recruit henchmen for free in various different ways. Um, but yeah, you may spend uh, five money to recruit a henchman. Uh, then you can spend information, spend one information to move yourself or your henchman on the board. As I say, henchmen count as um, one threat for area control. But your figure uh, trumps everything. Your figure controls whatever zone they are in, regardless of everything else that is there. So, pink. Uh, Who's uh, Two Face has no threat here at all. But if he moves his figure in, he immediately controls Robinson Park, and he also scares off the minion, the henchman. Um, henchmen don't stand up to uh, to to you, to your figure. Uh, if your figure's not on the board, they're considered to be in their lair and thus can't be attacked or anything. Um, but yeah, you can move your spend information to one information to perform as much movement as you like. And move your minions around and then move yourself, even move yourself into combat, especially if you kill a croc, you're going to want to move into combat with somebody um, because that's your speciality. Uh, once that is done, you draw back up to five cards. When this deck runs out, the game ends and the player with the highest level wins. So ultimately, what do I think of this game? Well, I really, really like this game. Um, the board is, looks gorgeous. It's this lovely little map of Gotham. The figures are great. Um, the, even the tokens, even there's a lot of cardboard, they, you know, it's, it's decent quality and, and everything looks really nice. I have a gripe about the shield, as I said. Oh, we've got this really, I almost forgot to mention. We've got these really cool dice, um, which have got uh, two ones, two twos, a three, and a Batman symbol on them. Um, in combat, Batman counts as zero, unless you're fighting Batman, in which case Batman counts as instant win for Batman, <laughs> which is uh, very cheeky. Uh, as I say, the game is fairly light strategy, and it does run a little long, considering that it's, it's very light, um, especially with four players. 
Three players isn't so bad, I guess. I've not played it with two. There's a slightly variation of the rules in two players in that you can't joint control territories, which makes sense because you're not as competitive. But yeah, with four players, the game is on the long side for what it is. Um, but as I say, I really enjoy it. It's never it's never bothered me uh, all that much. Uh, the theme makes a lot of sense, despite the, the killer croc gripe. I don't know why... I guess maybe the game hasn't been as big a hit as they were hoping it would be. Um, but I really hope they bring out some expansions, which are just, and all they need to be is just a villain pack. There's a box with a with a new villain in it with all his various um, components. Because there's, there's just so many villains who would, who would be really cool to play in the Batman universe. Batman's got the best villains, isn't he? Um, just you know, get, just get a, just get have the Scarecrow or Mr. Freeze or I'd buy Man Bat if they came out. You know, just just whatever. <laughs> It'd be really cool. Um, Batman is is it's, it's it's nice that you can never actually defeat Batman. And Batman is a constant presence, you know, kicking you in the ass. Um, you don't, and you never sort of grow to hate him. Everyone loves Batman. Um, so yes, yeah, it's, it's 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 nice that he is. Uh, he's he's almost in the background as a constant uh, nuisance. Um, but yeah, you can you never you never like directly trying to trying to kill him or anything. That's never the objective of the game. You're just trying to uh, irritate Gotham essentially. So yeah, this is a really cool game if you like your territory control. Uh, and you like Batman? This is this is going to be a slam dunk for you. You know, I can't imagine anybody having any um, problems with this. Um, yeah, no, that's all I have to say. Great game, uh, one of my favourites. Uh, I will thank you for watching. Uh, check out my other videos. Um, I've done other reviews and such like. Uh, like and subscribe to my channel and all that other gibbering nonsense that happens. Um, thanks for watching. The end.